<laughs> Whenever I begin my talks, I say that there's 450 phobias listed on the internet. 450. One is called Peladophobia, which is fear of bald people. <laughs> I hope none of you suffer from phobia like that. If you do, there are some others in the room as well. Good company for me, you know. There's another phobia which is called Theophobia, which is fear of religious people. Look at my marking on the forehead. Looks like a highway going all the way from here to me. These two lines. My God. And I don't know if there's a combination of that, a bald religious man. A paledo theophobia, I don't know. I hope none of you are finding me as a culture shock. Are you all okay with me? Oh, that was a very soft okay. Are you all okay with me? Yes. yes. Some dog I know. My God, I'm really amazed that all of you are here this evening, leaving your movie a bit too much. Too much for me. Not gone for a party. It's a Friday night. Swing on What are you guys doing here? What are you guys doing here? You know, you're not a chocolate ear. You're not a Baskin Robbins. You're not at the Ministry of Sound. <laughs> <laughs> All of you are thinking, what is this Swami up to? You know? <laughs> he seems a very well-updated Swami. <laughs> <laughs> a Friday evening, young guys and girls sitting in front of a crazy bald monk to listen to something like inspiration. Good heavens, talking to you, I'm so nervous that I have perspiration instead of inspiration, you know. <laughs> Sweating in this weather, looking at all of you, I'm so nervous to speak to all of you, can you imagine? An August assembly like all of you, good heavens, A Friday evening, most youngsters all over in Mumbai are partying, hard partying, you know. <laughs> all of you are noble people to me. Very noble souls. Three guys, you know, they just, three young lads just went partying and they were so drunk. Absolutely so drunk. They were just rolling up. They couldn't walk. And they came up to a cab and said to the cabbie, you know, we want to go to a certain place. And all three of them just sat in the car. Totally off. They didn't know what was happening. But the cab driver thought, great. They don't know what's happening. They're totally off. He just turned the ignition of the car on and turned it off and said, we reached. <laughs> so the first guy said, how much? He said, 5,000 rupees. This guy just pulled it on and said, thank you. The second guy said, you drive good, man. <laughs> Third guy gave him a tight slap on his face. The cab driver doubted it. Looks like this guy knows that he's not all that drunk. He knows what I did. So why are you hitting me, man? This third guy said, you know what? You sped up so much that we just miss an accident. Next time, drive slow. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for coming, leaving your movies, leaving your parties, leaving your precious sleep. How many of you are tired? Be honest. You may raise your hands if you like. My God, all others are fresh like a tulip, looks like. <laughs> We're coming here and trying to change the quality of what you do. In Mumbai, we have a political party called Shiv Sena. How many of you heard about it? I think there are loads of people, my God. Wow. Shiv Sena. And all of you are Pandav Sena. And I've seen some of your PS we need to have the right company. And what to speak of improving your life, improving your studies, you need good company. And when you want to improve in your life, how many of you get angry at your moms or dads? Okay, good. How many of you end up screaming or throwing temper tantrums? Good. How many of you 
feel bad about it and you feel that they're hurt and you shouldn't have done it? How many of you feel that I need to change and I don't want to do it this way? How many of you try to change? How many of you succeed in changing? Sorry. A hard question, isn't it? Uh, I would say, if you like, if you need like-minded company for improving in your exams, people who are studious, being together to improve the quality of your study and feel inspired. You know when you're in company of like-minded people who are doing the same thing, and when you see that guy studying hard, you say, hey, I need to do it, man. I need to do it. When you see three other people all going strong, we are all in it. Together. <laughs> Fight the power. You feel, hey, I need to do it, man. <laughs> you know, I truly totally feel interactions. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Interaction with like-minded people, I feel is the key to staying inspired. Key to being inspired. You know, a monk like me, in a city like Mumbai, it's a mad city. It is a mad city. What should I tell you? It's an incredibly mad city. And sometimes the kind of people I interact with, they're very high-end, upmark people. And they don't know how to treat a monk. You know? They come and deal with me in such, such weird ways. And I'm thinking, man, how do I really remain sane? The company of like-minded people like me keeps me going strong. Keeps me going strong with the purpose that I want to follow. How many of you want to Stop getting very picky about things at home. How many of you want to stop, you know, being judgmental about your friends? Have you ever judged your friend, one of your friends, straight for something, not even knowing whether it was true or false, but just came to a conclusion? How many of you heard some gossip about your friend from another person and formed an opinion about that person, not even trying to see and not even giving a benefit of doubt, Maybe you had, didn't do it, it's formed with opinion. I tell you this jamming is all about like-minded people coming together, not to prove, but to <coughs> improve. Improve in the way that we be with our parents, with our friends. We improve in the way we think, you know? Improve in the way we live and feel thoroughly inspired. So the first key I feel for inspiration is interactions. Interactions with like-minded people who have the same purpose, whether it's studies, whether it's dealings, and they're just wanting to improve. Imagine people coming together, all of you, such good people, such good youngsters, and listening to these things. You know, at least it's, in your, it's on your mind. Otherwise, we don't even think. With the study pressures and everything just keeps going, you know, studies and partying and movies and God and affairs keeps going, you know. Don't even get time to think. But the first key is interactions. The second one I felt was even if you fail in doing what you want to do, never give up. Never ever give up. Are you all so cowardly? Are you so cowardly and so weak in your heart? There are failures here and there, one or two failures, and just give up. <coughs> Why? Why should we give up? You know, remain inspired and firm and determined that hell or high waters, come what may. I don't care, man. I'm going to fight it out. We are all in it together. Fight the power. <laughs> no, I mean. <laughs> Am I too hyper by the way? <laughs> I need some water. <laughs> there was a student in Mumbai. Examination is a big thing in Mumbai. I think it's here as well. But results is an even bigger thing in Mumbai. Here with your results, I don't think it's so much of an issue, right? 
Is it? Greeds and failing and all that is a big thing? I don't know. But in India, gosh, it's a big thing. One guy, his father was slapping him, you know. A tight slap on his face. The neighbor said, sir, why are you hitting him? He said, tomorrow are his results. <laughs> the neighbor said, sir, the results are tomorrow, isn't it? Why are you hitting him today? He said, tomorrow I'm out of town, so I'm in Mr. There's tremendous academic pressure on these guys. I know a student at a medical school in Bombay. You would call it a medical university, eh? but in America they call it a school. You know, your, your terms here are college and university, but Americans call it a school. So I'll use the term for England's sake. In a medical university, it's called KM. And this guy stood first in every semester of his university. There were about 10 semesters, 10 to 12, <coughs> this whole course. Because India, it runs only two, two semesters a year. Stood first in every semester. And the last <coughs> semester, he wrote his exams. I was so anxious. After having stood first for all the semesters, he was so anxious whether he would stand first or not. Next day was his results. This guy was so anxious, he hung himself to death committed suicide, committed suicide. The next day, the results were out and he stood first. He stood first. His mind was killing him. You know what our problem is? It's not failures. It's not failures and inabilities. You know what our problem is? It's the mind. We just fail in dealing with our minds and we just give up this guy. He did well in all semesters. And it was just the mind that was pressurizing him. You know what? It's not all that hard to pick up the book and study. But the mind, hey, I haven't finished this. Hey, it's there. It's the way, man. What's happening? Can you imagine? This guy killed himself. And next day, I remember, his dead body was lying there. And the mark sheet, being first, was right there, you know. Woof. Woof. I don't think we, none of us go to that kind of an extreme level. But don't we every now and then give up? Don't we every now and then give up? My second thing I felt was, if you want to stay inspired, never give up. Never give up. The world is full of examples and replete with histories and stories and narrations of people who are so rock solid in their determination that they just didn't give up. In the face of all challenges, in the face of all failures, in the face of all calamities, just stood there and fought it hard, you know? I want to tell you a story. Can I? Yes. And may I? A couple in a university in the United States had an affair. The guy was a Jew, the girl was a Muslim. And the girl was pregnant. She was carrying a child, you know. Uh, her parents said, look, there's no way that we're going to get you married to him. Uh, you better drop the child. She said, why? This is the first time I'm carrying a baby. It's my baby. You're asking me to drop the child? I can't do that. The parents say, well, you can't drop the child. You're not going to get you married to him. There's only one option left. You may give birth to the child, but you need to put up the child for adoption then. You can't have the child. She said, all right, at least I, can't, I won't kill my child. Fine. She gave birth to the child and put him up for adoption. And immediately the child was adopted. And the condition that this lady made was, if you're adopting my child, the only one thing I request is, please, look at it that he gets good education. 
goes to a good, a good university. Fine, you know. And when they decided to do it, this gentleman, not a very well-to-do family, when he went to uni, he went to the University of Reeds, and it was such an expensive course, such an expensive course, the family was shelling out their money, and he felt so bad, God, I'm just finishing off all the money that my parents have. And he decided to drop out of the uni, of the main course that he had taken. And now after having dropped out of this course, he decided to take a cheaper course, which is really dirty cheap. And this was a course on calligraphy. This man started learning calligraphy. What do you do with calligraphy? <laughs> calligraphy. You know, probably write the greeting card. I'm not talking about it in a condescending way. But what do you do out of calligraphy? You know, still make a living out of it. You write a greeting card. Happy by day. <laughs> it's nice, good handwriting. You, know? you don't really make a career out of calligraphy. And this man didn't have money, didn't have a place to live. He was walking to the Hare Krishna temple every day and eating his meals. And after having learned this course in calligraphy, this man was thinking, what am I going to do with this? Much later, this gentleman formed a company at the age of 20 in his father's garage. He built a first computer along with a friend of his. And then the two of them formed the company. When he was 30, he, they had 4,000 employees just in 10 years. 4,000. And it was a $2 billion worth company. Macintosh Incorporation. Steve Jobs. You know. You know what he said? He said, when you're going through what you're going through, don't connect the dots forward. Because you can't see what's coming up. What you're going through now and what you have now probably could turn into an incredible opportunity in the future. You just can't understand it now. He said, connect the dots backwards. He said, today when I see this company and look at it back in retrospect, I can see what it meant then. Because if I wouldn't have taken a course in calligraphy, the iPad, the iPhone, the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pros wouldn't have the fonts that they have today. Wow. But calligraphy was incredible. That man didn't give up. No money, no place to stay. Eating in the Hare Krishna temple. Food for all. Program. Amazing, you know? Amazing. And then guess what? At the age of 30, with his massive business running, he hired a guy because he was not so good at business. He was good at the technical side of it, but he needed a businessman to run that. He hired a very smart guy and made him the director of the company and a few others were the board of directors. And guess what? The guy whom he hired chucked him out from the company that he made. Threw him out. Can you imagine? Steve Jobs was without a job in the company that he made. There we are. Look at that. What did he do? He tried to convince this guy. People don't always get convinced. Do you have experience of that? Talking to people and trying to get them, you're always get convinced about things. Especially people who don't like you, they just don't like you. And no matter what you do, they can never appreciate you. Do you have at least one person like this in your life? Who can just never appreciate you? Doesn't matter whether you do good or bad. No. This guy, I don't care. Just get lost, man. And Steve Jobs was out. And I said, oh, what does he do? He said, I just loved my work. Such a passion for technology. He started a company with one of his friends called Next. And then started another company called Pixar Animation. Pixar 3D Animation. They were the first people to make a 3D animation movie called Toy Story. You know, incredible movie. Never give up. Inspiration is about never giving up, standing there rock solid, come what may, I don't care, I'm going to be like a Steve Jobs, even if I don't get a job, I don't care, but I'm going to fight it out, because we are all in it together and fight the power. That's it. We'll be right there, fighting the power. And you know what he said? That's when he found out his love. 
and Lee were such a part of his life, who stayed with him all through till about <coughs> last year when he died. She was on his side in his home, you know, in California. <coughs> he said, I love my work. And he did so well that Macintosh decided to get him back. Next, and Pixar became a competition to Macintosh. And the director who chucked him out from his own company asked him to rejoin the company and brought Next and Pixar back again. And if it wasn't for Next, you wouldn't have the iPhones and the iPads the way they are today. You know? Friends, ladies and gentlemen, my strong feeling is don't give up. Never give up. Just be there. And to do that, the first one is very important interactions with like minded people. Otherwise, how do you not give up? Be there. And do you also find yourself deciding to do something nice and noble? How many of you decide to maybe let me try and chant? Do you? And how many of you learn that you can't? Sorry. Hare Krishna. <laughs> you know, Srila Prabhupada used to say, you know, and he had a very heavy Bengali accent in English. He would say, chant, chant, chant. He was saying in one lecture, so I was telling these people, chant, chant, chant. <laughs> And these people were telling me, can't, can't, can't. <laughs> do you find yourself slipping in this, sometimes failing in things that you want to do in life, apart from the studies and exams? You know what's inspiration? To be with like-minded people and be so firm that we just don't give up. Be strong. Be strong. Stay there. Failures come. But failures are just stepping stones to success. Maybe, maybe you are the one to make the next, next. Macintosh made, Steve Jobs made one. Maybe you are the one to make the next, next. Who knows? Are you all with me? Yes. Okay, good. The third thing I felt for inspiration was perspiration. Hard work. It's easy to feel inspired. That's called a daydreamer. <laughs> yes, say, yeah, I won't go good in my exam you now. I'm going to do it, man. I'm going to stand first. What are you doing? Oh, I won't. <laughs> How many hours do you sleep? Yeah, what to say, How about study? What will happen? How will it happen? I'll chant Hare Krishna. Krishna will give the knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> it needs hard work. Hard work. Tiger Woods was asked, Sir, what's the secret of your success? He said, Practice. 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 No substitute. How many of you are doing university courses in maths? <coughs> None? Oh, good. Okay, two. How many in uh, accountancy? Medicine? <coughs> Dentistry? History? Mm -hmm. Certainly not all that bad. That <laughs> history. <laughs> <laughs> practice. Practice. Mathematics. A simple thing like mathematics. Practice to crack it, you know. Hard work. Secret of success. Work hard. Really hard. A teacher came to a classroom in India and said to the kids, Hey, I have a question for you. Said, ship is sinking, frogs are croaking, and potatoes are 20 rupees a kilo. What's my age? <laughs> Stupid said. What a problem. She repeated, ship is sinking. Frogs are croaking, potatoes are 20 rupees a kilo. What's my age? One kid said, 32. Yeah. She said, that's right. <laughs> How did I get it? He said, my sister is 16. And she's half mad. 
<laughs> that goes to say that you're 32, you know. For the man. Practice. Practice. It's all about hard work. The only place where, the only place where success comes before work is in the dictionary. Just because S happens to come before W. That's the only place where success comes before work and no other place. Where for perspiration and practice is such a need to work hard, whether you're learning music, whether you're studying, or you're practicing Krishna consciousness. Chanting Hare Krishna. We used to go to medical school in Bombay, and there was this guy, funny guy. He used to come to a program, chant and all of that stuff, and he started chanting 16 rounds of Hare Krishna and becoming very much involved in the Hare Krishna practices and processes. And this guy was anyways a lazy escapist, you know, didn't want to study much. And he found a good reason. I'm on it. Krishna will take care. So, you know, he went and he wrote his exam, and the day before the result, he came to the temple and said to the Lord, My dear Lord, I am your devotee. Now everything is in your hands. Your reputation is at stake. <laughs> if you don't deal with my results properly now, you know, everyone's going to think that a Hare Krishna devotee, Krishna does nothing. No one's going to come to you and no one's going to come for these programs. Krishna, do something about it. And he was chanting. Funny enough, he passed the exam. <laughs> we used to get about 15 people for the function, the event that we would do. That day, a hundred people came. He said, this guy passed, there has to be a God. <laughs> How can it be? This guy has passed his exam, there has to be a God. And our program enhanced like anything. This guy continued to practice his chanting and his spirituality, his Krishna consciousness. He went on for his post-graduation in skin and venereal disease, you know. And when he went for this, he stood first in the university, got a gold medal. That guy was so lousy, failing his exams, got a gold medal. And after this, did his super specialization. Super specialization in hair transplant therapy. Now all bald guys go to him to get hair from some part of the head to transplant it and then just pay him so much money to pluck their hair and put it again back on there, you know. <laughs> and once I went to his clinic, so everyone was surprised, Prabhuji, what do you, why do you need hair for? Well, naturally, you know, your hair is all gone. My God, Hare Krishna. I'll tell you, a lot of hard work and practice of Krishna consciousness. <coughs> we are all in it? Together. Together. Fight the power. power. So right. Shall I tell you another thought? We just have about 10 minutes and I'll summarize quickly. I also feel after perspiration and practice, we need something called as the ability to inspire others. How do you stay inspired? By inspiring others. You know this gentleman. In this kit, God, he had a gusto around him, bubbling. I hope that's the same in his real life as well. <laughs> he had a gusto around him. Hey, man, don't worry about it. And the football match, and call him. Uh, half of it I couldn't figure out what was happening. <laughs> I was trying to make some sense out of it, but I didn't really gather because I'm so culturally different. You know? There's a powerful. <coughs> Powerful energy in trying to help others and inspire others. We are inspired and energetic when we try to make others feel inspired and energetic. You know, uh, people want to look good. There's a teacher that came to a classroom and wrote on the whiteboard, I am beautiful. What tense is it? A student said, pass, pass <laughs> tense. <laughs> I am beautiful, Hare Krishna. It's past tense. Everyone wants to be beautiful, handsome. Unfortunately, we don't have a choice. We are what we are. No matter how much shower gel I rub on my body, and no matter how much cosmetics I put up, I can't change, you know. I'm the same. I don't have a choice. I want to be handsome. I'm not, unfortunately. What to do? 
I just am not handsome. Look at me, bald guy, you know. Bald guy, there's no question of being handsome. I want to be handsome. I'm obsessed. Obsessed to be handsome. But no matter what we do, are you going to call me handsome? No, because I'm not. You know what I can do? I can lend my hand to some. Although I'm not handsome, I can lend my hand to some and that makes me truly handsome in the eyes of a lot of people. Tell me, in all honesty, I have a question for all of you. How many of you would like to be a very good looking, good looking or a handsome and a charismatic friend of yours who looks really great, who wears the best brands in the town, who is so cool and moves around with such a charisma and makes his presence felt all around, but backstabs you by criticizing you, backbites, and always trying to pull you down, <coughs> envious of you, critical about you. How many of you want to be in the presence of such a person despite his looks or her looks, despite the brands he or she uses, despite the charisma he or she has? How many of you, raise your hands, would want to be in the presence of such a negative person who just backbites and, you know, criticizes you all the time? Is there any reason people would you like to be? What about a guy or a girl who's not as charismatic, who's not as good looking, who doesn't have the best brands? You know, he probably has a jacket which is a Hawick, you know. That's all he can afford, 29 pounds, you know. That's all he can afford, 29 pounds, buy a Hawick. He can't have a blue harbor. What to do? He just gets a havoc. Well, doesn't have the best brands, doesn't look all that good. Language God. He needs to learn some good language. Charisma. Hare <laughs> Krishna. <laughs> but he loves you. She loves you. Appreciates you. Makes you feel encouraged. Always there to support you. Always there to help you. How many of you would want to be in the presence of such a person. Right. Amazing, isn't it? People like these. It's called the difference between the personality ethic and the character ethic. The personality <laughs> ethic was 200 years back in the world. There was a character ethic with this is what meant. People who didn't look that good, people who didn't have the best, <coughs> were good people. Today, it's all about looks, your accent, the way you dress up, the way you carry yourself, you know. I truly feel I may not be handsome, not at all. But if I lend my hand to someone to help that person and make that person feel encouraged, appreciated, positive, there is a certain energy to it. Because of having inspired someone, I feel tremendous inspiration. That's the only reason I come to England. I don't get anything out of here. I don't get anything out of here except sleepless nights. <laughs> and a tired body. Lecture after lecture after lecture. Tomorrow morning, 7.30 to 8, I'm giving a talk. 7.30 to 9, I'm giving a talk. And then driving somewhere to start a talk from 10 to 11.30. After a break of half an hour, then I speak from 12 to 1.30. Then after a lunch break of 1.30 to 2.30, I speak from 2.30 to 4 o'clock. Then I go back to the temple at the Bhakti Vedanta Manor and I drive to another place to be there for two hours to give another talk. And by the time I'm done, I'm going to be totally finished. As I come and lie down in bed, and next morning, on Sunday morning, I have a talk from 7.30 to 9. <laughs> and then thereafter, I've given an appointment to someone at 10.30. He has a serious marriage problem. I have to talk to him about it. And after that, I'm going to meet someone else who's in the strong addictions and wants to get out of it. And then I go for a lunch when I meet people. And then I come back. And then someone else is waiting to meet. And in the evening I have another talk. And I go to bed at 12 o'clock again. <laughs> you know what I feel? Believe me you. Whether it's study or Krishna consciousness or spirituality. There's a certain power to helping others. To make others feel good, to make others feel inspired. Everyone needs it. We need it, which means others need <coughs> it. And if we are the givers, we receive. 
You know, Winston Churchill said, you make a living by what you get, but you make a life out of what you give. You only make a living by what you get. You make a life by what you give to people. Give. Give yourself. There's nothing more precious that you can give unto another person than your time. There's nothing more precious that you can give to another person than to make that person feel inspired and uplifted, uplifted indeed. <laughs> you know? And when you try to do that for others, see how it, you feel. It's an incredible formula that doesn't make any damn sense under the sun. But it works incredibly well. Incredibly well. Make others feel special. Don't make people feel trashed and rubbish. It could be your parents, it could be your friends, it could be your siblings, it could be anyone in your college or your workplace, your colleagues. Don't make people feel trashed and rubbish. Make people feel special. Special by looking at the good that they do and focusing on the good and expressing it and saying, wow, you're amazing at this, man. You're amazing at this. You know, make people feel special. And there's an energy that will make you feel special. Thoroughly inspired, you know. It's quite amazing. I thought it's really nice. Oh, shall I? Shall I? for taking taking his time out his very busy schedule as you guys already heard it's so so busy and he's uh, managed to make managed to make time for us today so thank you very much again for that now we're going to go on to Kirtan or live music uh, Google Papu is just going to explain a little bit about it and then he'll lead so if you can just get the Madango or Harmonium set up yes. there was a guy who went for a workout in the gym and after his workout, he went to the change room. <coughs> and as he was changing, a cell phone rang. This guy picked up the cell phone and from the other side, a lady said, Hey darling, I'm at the shopping mall and I've just seen a pink albino coat. Love it, darling. Can I have it? He said, How much is it? He said, It's not all that bad, just about 2,000 pounds. <laughs> Really. So okay, go ahead, no problem, it's fine, take it. So thank you, honey, thank you. You're just so lovely, my hubby. Yes, I'm good. <laughs> he said, uh, I'm, I'm also seeing this very new fresh pair of sandals. <coughs> I hear you, I know, they're so lovely. Just wonderful ones, you know, they're the Swarovski stone stern. It's just so beautiful. Can I have them? So how much? It's not much, just about 5,000 pounds. <laughs> one last thing, one last thing, sweetheart. Just have one little thing to ask. What's it? So I find this incredible watch. It's amazing. It's a bomb in my ship. Can I get it? He said, a bomb in my ship. Are you sure? He said, he has a bomb in my ship. How much? He said 20,000 pounds. If you know what a bomb in Malaysia is, if you don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> 20,000 pounds. He said, okay, don't worry, go ahead, go ahead, take it. And then as he hung the phone, he said, whose cell phone is this? <laughs> <laughs> After having promised, this lady, someone's wife, called this guy and his phone was by, he just picked up and said, take it. Whose cell phone? You know why I'm saying this? <laughs> it's because a cellular phone happens to be the means of connection for all of us to connect to people wherever we are. Isn't it? Wherever we go, I can connect to all of you. If you just give me your number, I can connect to you from India. I can connect to you from the United States. I'm probably in a place called Vilnius in Lithuania and I can call you. Wherever I go under the sun, I can connect to you if I have a cellular phone connection. And therefore, when we want to connect to God, the cellular phone through which we connect to Him, the way to connect to the divine, the way to connect to God, 
is to chant his names. You know, it's nothing about nothing but to network with him, nothing but to connect to him. And when we connect to him, we are accessing a power which is way beyond our abilities, which is way beyond our capacities. It's too powerful, and he helps us comes in our life and helps us deal with all this negative stress and pressure and depression <laughs> and loneliness, that darkness in the heart. So what's chanting? Calling. Like you take your cell phone and call, so also we take our beads and that's our cellular phone and we call God every day. Stay in touch. Every day. And what's beautiful about this calling is we can sing the call. When we sing the call, that's called Kirtan. You know, what we're going to do now? Chant this mantra called the Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, 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 Ram. Beautiful. You just sing it to a melody. And as I sing, I'll take the lead singing, and then all of you can respond. And try and do it loudly, because the networks are usually jammed. <laughs> if you truly want to reach him, make a strong call. Now try and call out loudly and see if we can connect to the Supreme Divine and feel that connection. Thank you all very much once again. Hare Krishna.